now there are mainly two types of people involved in this uh, design and programming so the set of people who will be designing the computer they are called as computer architects or they are also called as designers and then the other people who use this computer to do some tasks like programming they are called as programmers okay so what i mean to say is there are some set of people who will be using a computer and i think you know what are the various types of computers we have some computers are general generic uh, computers which we call as general purpose computers as well uh, which we are going to use like desktops laptops all this and these computers are are typically supposed to do anything right so they are called as generic and some computers are actually uh, specific to some task for example the computers which you might see uh, in your uh, washing machine they are supposed to do only certain things like you can set the timer or they automatically turn on turn off like that they are called as embedded systems right and when we look at this embedded system or the computer the core of it is nothing but a microprocessor right microprocessor or the processing unit which is present inside the computer right and now what is the difference between various types of computers is the main difference is this what is that computer mainly designed to do depending on what it is supposed to do designers will try to pick up the hardware circuits and then they will try to connect them for example if you look at a general purpose computer what will it contain the main important thing is we are going to use stored memory concept stored memory concept means we are going to place a program in the memory and we'll take the program and data from the memory and execute and then put the result in the memory therefore the most important part is memory but then when you look at memory it is it is compared comparatively slow uh, when compared to the uh, registers that is why we are supposed to have registers right and how many registers can we have that depends on the cost how costly you know uh, how much money you are going to put in that if you are going to uh, you know put in more money then you might have a lot of registers in case if you have many registers then your program might be small in case if you have less number of registers then most of the instructions will be required to move the data into the registers and out of them that is called spilling which is not in the syllabus but just just think that uh, the program size is going to vary depending on the number of registers we have because the instructions are going to vary see i'm just trying to give you an overview i'm not going to explain everything in this video so don't worry simple things i'm saying there is memory and there are registers right and then there is arithmetic and logic circuits so arithmetic circuits are supposed to perform the arithmetic operations like addition multiplication subtraction division and logic units are supposed to do the logical operations like logical and logical or like that let's call it arithmetic and logic unit now the main purpose is we have to move the data from here into the registers and from registers into this and again the results have to be moved here and the results have to be moved here so to make all this happen we have to apply certain signals at certain timings therefore we need those signals called as control signals at particular instances of time right for example if you want to move the information some data from let us say register r1 to register r2 why do you want to move you know let's say there is some something uh, some task which requires it then we have to give this write control signal to this and read control signal to this at the same time then only the data will move from here to here isn't it therefore uh, so wh what i mean to say is uh, we need a special unit called as control unit which is supposed to give these signals to all these components now the entire purpose of a designer is to select all these components how to select them depending on your cost they are supposed to select them right for example if you have uh, 10, you know, 16 registers then in order to select one of the register we need a decoder then what should be the size of the decoder 4 by 16 right and let us say your memory is 1 kilobyte then whatever the size of the de decoder required 10 by 2 power 10 decoder 
right and similarly you know your ALU operations if you want to add two 8 bits then we are supposed to have 8 bit adder therefore depending on what what your cost is and what you are trying to achieve your designers are supposed to choose the hardware and then connect them somehow which which will decrease the time right so how to connect them all is the second issue and then after connecting them how to give the signals the control signals what type of control signals are required and how to generate them by looking at the instruction that is called as instruction decoding right and that is being done by cpu got it so whatever it is all these things are going to be looked at by the designer that is called as computer architecture now uh, how will the designer design all this is depending on what the programmer wants to perform therefore there is designers who are trying to design the computer who are trying to select the hardware and connect them and then they have to keep in mind about the other people who are going to use the computer and depending on the other people who are programmers they have to design therefore before designing the computer these people have to fix something called as instruction set or it is also sometimes called as machine instructions so first they will decide about the instruction set which is machine instructions which will depend on what the programmers will need or what the programmers will think uh, they require in order to write the programs right and so they design the instruction set first based on the instruction set they will choose the hardware and then connect them so the most important thing or the place at which these two people are going to interact is going to be instruction set that is why instruction set has to be discussed first now based on what your instruction set is then we'll see what are the components required in order to implement them and how to connect them are you understanding this so since we are talking about the instruction set let's talk about an instruction what are the main things that should be pre in the present in the instruction set and from there we go step by step got it so this design and all we shall see later first we'll discuss about the instructions and the addressing modes and then we shall discuss about the design so while designing a computer we'll take a small basic example and then i'll show you how the actual computer is designed that is the entire purpose of the course okay now let's see how the instruction will look like so instruction is nothing but a sequence of bits isn't it what happens is we are supposed to write a program in terms of instructions and all these instructions will be present in the memory somewhere let us say this is the memory and all the instructions are present inside the memory they are all the instructions right and assume that the instructions are starting from memory address 100 then what we do is we take each instruction one by one and then get into a special register called as instruction register ir so every every computer is supposed to have generally they'll have a special register called as ir into which we get the instruction now after getting that instruction our cpu should understand how to interpret this how to generate the timing and control signals in order to execute this that is why our instruction is again going to be divided into various parts right so mainly the main parts that we should have is one is what is the mode and what is the op code and what are the operands got it so now what is this mode is uh, we shall discuss after we discuss about the operands now what is the op code is what is your instruction supposed to do this op code may be you want to add or you want to subtract right or you want to increment or you want to multiply or you want to branch so these are all some of the examples of the op codes op code is nothing but what is this type of instruction that is being being specified by this op code and now the operands are nothing but what is the what is the data where is it present and on that data you are supposed to perform this operation that is specified by these operands now there are various ways you can give the operands now whatever number is present here how to interpret this is being given by this mode for example sometimes 
you might want to uh, use no operands at all right then that is called as zero zero address instruction and sometimes your instruction might contain one address that is called as one address instruction and sometimes it might contain two addresses that is called as two address instructions right when there is no address at all fine we need not talk about the mode at all in case if there is an address present now it depends so whenever this address is given so is this directly the address of the operand in the memory or does it specify a register in the register set or does it specify address where if I go I can find the address of the operand so there are various various ways we can specify it therefore we shall first discuss about the addressing modes and then we will discuss about the types of instructions there we will discuss about the opcodes and then we can discuss about the design right so are you understanding how I am how I am trying to teach the subject first I am going to talk about the modes which means given an instruction and the operand how do you want to interpret this number is this number directly uh, the operand or is this number the address of the operand or is this number a register right and depending on that we have to get the operand from that address that address is nothing but the effective address got it so we'll discuss about the modes first and then after that we'll see what are the types of opcodes possible that depends on what are the types of operations possible in a normal computer and once it is done then we can go to the design then what i'll do is i'll take a small computer an example as an example which will contain only a subset of the instructions probably like this and then i'll show you in order to implement these instructions how to design the computer got it so let's go step by step now let's discuss about the addressing modes okay hi if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of 1 lakh students who take GATE every year, there are only 500 seats in old IITs. So all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And IITs, universities better than IITs, they have very good acceptance rate like 30%, 40%. But all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177. And IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply and statement of purpose building and then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral, which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days and whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting a, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join the of visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide, we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, 
you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494554454. Okay, thank you.